Some conservatives have a problem with minor attraction, and I'm tired of pretending otherwise. But you didn't see that opening coming. Fair warning, today's episode has some foul and vulgar language, though I've tried to bleep out all of it. Uh, be sure that the youngins aren't around to listen to this episode. Let's not waste time, because kids need saving and protecting. The wicked flee when no man pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So let me clarify, I am not lumping all conservatives together with this opening statement that I just made. What I'm talking about is a festering issue that I've been noticing on X, aka Twitter, for some time. The way I see it, there are conservatives, there are conservatives, and then there are conservative grifters. The last group being the ones who are willing to overlook some major red flags in politicians and famous influence influencers among their own group uh, as long as they can bait people into clicking their content for money. That's why I call them grifters. The worst offenders are in a specific subset of the conservative sphere. For those who remain on Facebook or Instagram only, those of you, you might just be blissfully ignorant of some of the folks I'm about to discuss. Anyway, let's start with two creeps who, in my informed opinion, are most certainly guilty of sex trafficking. Andrew and Tristan Tate. These brothers rose to public prominence during their short careers in kickboxing. But Andrew, the oldest, is also very well known for appearing on Big Brother 17 in the UK back in 2016. He ended up being kicked off the show early after a video emerged of him roughing up a woman. Doesn't look too pretty for those of you who've who've seen it or those of you who plan to look into it now that I mentioned it. After the video uh, circulated all over the internet, he maintained that the beating he gave this girl, this woman, uh, in the video was consensual and part of their kink. Uh, Not long after... Uh, a woman posted a video of her own and she claimed to be the woman in the video and uh, she corroborated what Andrew Tate was saying and she said she consented to these actions from him. Now Andrew is on multiple videos explaining how he and his brother Tristan decided to get into the business of creating pornography. More specifically they started a business using the multiple girls that they were dating at the time when their kickboxing career seemed to be drying up. Uh, They then ended up creating this online training course uh, to teach other guys to be just like them and to use their tactics. Fast forward to December 2022 And the Tate brothers wound up being arrested under charges of rape and human trafficking in their current home home country of Romania. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about the current case against them. Uh, But if you want to do that, it's publicly accessible online. In English, you can find it in in English, and it's public information. Uh, Others on social media have done a swell job of explaining the case. Um... There, to name a few, there's Milk Bar TV. He's on YouTube and all over Twitter. Um, there's Crayon Murders. Uh, it's an anonymous account. A person behind it is anonymous. And um, he's on Twitter and he's on been on YouTube. Um, there are various others who have been helping to expose the uh, self-snitching and the mountain of evidence against the Tate brothers. Uh, when you actually look at at it with an unbiased opinion and you actually look at the definition of sex trafficking 
you are forced to come away with the logical conclusion that the Tate brothers have self-snitched in multiple videos that they are textbook sex traffickers. There's even uh, attorney Bruce Rivers. He's got his YouTube channel and he's analyzed some of these self-snitch videos. And from the way it sounds, I mean, these guys have buried themselves by their own words. I do want to hone in though on some particularly gross and immoral things that the perverts Andrew and Tristan Tate have said during some interviews. Here you go. Off, mate. You got a petrol bill. Do you know what I mean? It's like whatever for you. You've got a fit sister who's 16, maybe. Muslims have the best frame on earth. Crazy. I want this. Yeah. And this is my society, and they're coming along telling me they're gonna blow this up and take this away from me. Mm. No, I want a virgin wife at 16 who's gonna obey me. That's yeah. what I want. I was working uh, as an IT technician in my former high school, fixing laptops. Okay. Got fired from there for sleeping with the head girl. You know how it is. <laughs> Hard out here. How old? Is <laughs> I was like 18. Oh, shit. And she was 16. So I was like, what's the problem? And they're like, oh yeah, but you're a member of staff. Da, 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 da. Whatever. I was contacted by Andrew Tate, the older of the Tate brothers, three years ago when I was just 16. And I was a bit surprised because I had just made my Instagram account. I had a couple hundred followers, not a lot of private account. And he obviously had a couple of million. He was pretty well known, especially by the guys in Romania and in the world. So he messaged me. It read simply Romanian girl, followed by a strawberry emoji. Because like I said, entry, I'll put a completely pointless emoji on the end. Some cherries or an orange or a strawberry. It was very obvious we were high school girls. Like we had our high schools, like in our bio and everything. I feel like he was just trying to find girls that seemed as like innocent or naive as possible. So I messaged her, she's like, I'm only 16. I was like, no, about me. 21, I don't care. When I bring on new girls, I usually pair them with Vivian. Because Vivian's younger. Melissa's like 28, Vivian's like 21. So Vivian's been with me six years. She's completely head over heels in love with me. She wants kids with me, everything, every. Vivian's 21. And at this point, he's had her, he's been her girlfriend for six years. It means that they met when she was 15 years. And all these, 15 year old, not 15, sorry, 16 year old women or 18 year old women, whatever the law is in America. 18? It's 18 usually. You 18. get married at 16. I All right, in Romania, 16, sorry. Woman who didn't want to reveal her identity on camera showed us screenshots of an exchange between her and Tristan Tate when she was 17 that appears to follow Andrew's script. She was first contacted last May. His initial message reads, you're beautiful. And the true abundance mindset of you can have the pick of the crop. You can have the world's most attractive women. As you can see, it's pretty obvious that these guys have no qualms about getting sexually involved with teenage girls, as young as 16, maybe even 15, as you saw in the one or two. A lot of these videos are not older than seven or eight years old, and these guys are both currently in their mid thirties. So, we can safely label Andrew and Tristan Tate as Minor Attracted Predators, or MAPs for short. Moving on to another creepazoid, Nicholas J. Fuentes. This guy became famous shortly after high school when he attended the Charlottesville, Virginia rally in August 2017. Uh, he's a proud denier of the Holocaust. Uh, he now, there's nothing wrong with questioning details and facts about history. Um, that's my little personal disclaimer. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But he denies that that majority of the facts of the Holocaust are true. Uh, but he, And he legitimately has praised Hitler in multiple clips. I saw something on Twitter. I don't even know if this is true. But something on Twitter said like, all of Hitler's girlfriends were 16 and 17. And Alex Jones, I, I don't even know if that's true, but if that is, that's probably why Alex Jones called Hitler a pedophile. And it's like, you faggots would be saying the same thing about Hitler. MLK was a rapist and Hitler was a pedophile. It's like, you know what? The world's a little bit more complicated than that, okay? The world's a little, little bit more complicated than you're making it out to be. Hitler was a pedophile and kind of a pagan. It's like, well, he was also cool. So, you know, time to grow up. We're not, we're not children anymore, am I right? 
it's supposedly he's also a proud incel, which means he's involuntarily celibate. Um, and he's proud of that. He also might be secretly a closeted homosexual. Being, if we're really being honest, never having a girlfriend, never having sex with a woman, really makes you more heterosexual. Because honestly, dating women is gay. Having sex with women is gay. Now, that last fact about him being homosexual, that's only pertinent because he claims to be a Catholic Christian who hates homosexuals and homosexuality. Um, at the very least, he's a closeted homosexual and he's trying to repress those urges. But it gets worse. He's the leader of something called America First. And for those paying very close attention, he was also a January 6th provocateur who encouraged folks to take the Capitol and disregard the police with a bullhorn. And uh, ironically, or not, uh, a lot of the people who were in the crowd that day that he encouraged got arrested and sentenced. But why didn't he? These are valid questions. How there are not more people calling him out for the federal asset that he quite possibly is, is beyond me, but moving on. Worst of all, just like the Tate brothers, he says the following sorts of things. Did a, did a person of the Trinity go around and say, hmm, I need to find one of those mature women that is smart and has common interests and things in common with me. Or did the Holy Spirit go and say, I need to... How old was the Virgin Mary? I think she was like... Well, she wasn't 18. I'll say that much. Certainly wasn't 18. You know what I expect? A fertile womb. A fertile womb and a sort of innocent, childlike spirit. All these people in the chat, dude, just stop. Shut up. Shut up. If you're t I'm, I'm banning people. If you're telling me to stop... You're gone. Bye. You! I'm out here free thinking, okay? And if I've got weird sexual interests, and if I'm talking of, if I'm dropping these red pills on you, you're gonna shut up and stop, dude, just stop. Why? What am I scaring the hoes? Good. Them hoes, okay? Okay? You want, you want to go to the correct opinion show? Go watch TV. Worst thing possible that you're, you know, dating somebody that's a year younger, right? End of the world. I will say that, you know, let's think about what's really going on here. Age of consent means the age at which an adult can consent. Do we really believe that you have to be 18 years old in order to consent to sex? Otherwise, it's rape. Are we really supposed to believe that people, adults, grown adults who are past the point of puberty engage in a relationship and that becomes a rape? As you can see, this guy advocates for some gross things. Just like the Tate brothers, of all the ignorant and foolish things that Nick Fuentes says, the worst of all is his advocating for abolishing age of consent laws. Yet another minor attracted predator. Map. Side note. Another reason that I and others suspect that he's a federal asset is that multiple people close to him, Nick Fuentes, have been caught either with child porn or for trying to solicit sex from minors. One of them being Ali or Ali Akbar or Ali Alexander. Uh, and Fuentes is on multiple clips admitting that he knew about Ali's attraction to minors and that he'd been explicitly texting a teenage boy. <laughs> Ali was out here, I was like, I took Owen short, I was like, Owen, at least a pedo, right? And he's like, why does everybody say that? I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, Are you right. serious? How do like, people not know? And he's like, he's like, oh, uh, I work for InfoWars, so I don't really deal with that. Uh, right there. Who said what? Owen Schroyer was giving me the... Oh, I don't really know about Ali, I just work for InfoWars, that's my job. Oh, were you asking about, like, 
but well, Ali hit on me hard. Oh. And was like, asked me how tall I was, what kind of alcohol I drank. He was like, hey, if you want to come do chores for me, let me know. Now, the Tate brothers and Fuentes are obviously evil dudes. Uh, in my opinion, they are quite degenerate, though they pretend to be moral. They pretend to be persecuted. They pretend to be, they pretend that the whole world is against me and you must join the cause and fight for what's right. To the untrained young person, a lot of the things that they say actually sound right. And a lot of the things that they say are actually true and right. The Tates, they encourage men to be physically fit, to work hard for what they want in life, to dress respectably, respectfully out in public, and to be unafraid of their natural manliness. Fuentes, he encourages young people to proclaim that Christ is king, to speak your mind without fear of being canceled by PC mobs, and to be unashamed of your race if you're a white person. These are good things to encourage. These are legitimately good things. And they're messages that have helped them amass large followings, specifically from the MAGA crowds. Um, these guys are considered red pill influencers. And that's a, a Matrix, Matrix reference for those of you who have not seen the Matrix movies. Unfortunately, what these red pill predators are offering to young conservatives and weak-willed Christians is nothing more than poison disguised as liberty. Now, I consider it pretty easy to call out their degenerate and predatory behavior and their attraction to minors. But what's more frustrating than all the crap that they say is the grift that we see in modern conservatism. There are very famous and influential conservatives who have given these men airtime and shared their content. And doing that helps these men gain more money and influence over young minds online. These conservatives who promote these guys, they are, they are who many consider to be respectable and intelligent and non-conforming. I want to call attention to some of them and call them out by name for their hypocrisy. And that's pretty much what I want to wrap up this episode with. Uh, my focus is on these, is these grifters here at the end. Tucker Carlson, he's a beast when it comes to calling out the leftist sexual grooming of children and the indoctrination going on in K-12 schools. Unfortunately, about eight months ago, uh, he interviewed Andrew Tate regarding the current allegations against him and his brother. Uh, and he sits there and he just lets Tate lie to his face over and over and over without pushing back on his lies. Tucker just does his, his uh, signature face and he lets Tate lie to his face. He doesn't bring up the textbook uh, definition, the definition of sex trafficking, human trafficking. He doesn't uh, indicate that he has any knowledge of the case whatsoever. So much for Tucker, Tucker being a, uh, a conservative who does his research, right? Not much hard-hitting journalism from Tucker, unfortunately. And there's even, uh, I think, a photo or two of Tucker giggling as he was walking around the Tate property the day of the interview. Candace Owens, who recently left the Daily Wire. She also interviewed Andrew Tate around the same time that Tucker did. And the entire episode consisted of him lying to her as well. And he makes himself out to be just a nice guy who's being persecuted for all his humanitarianism, all this good that he does for people. Now, she referenced a mashup video from multiple clips uh, of Tate, of him describing himself in his own words, how he coerced, controlled, and defrauded women to get them to do commercial sex acts on camera. As I said, this is textbook sex trafficking, using fraud, using coercion to trick or con a person into doing something they wouldn't otherwise do to sell themselves or to work 
do something that they wouldn't otherwise do. They something that they previously were opposed to doing, and you convince them through dishonest methods for personal gain. All Candace could say when she discussed that mashup video by Milk Bar TV, she said that it felt she felt like it was a dishonest portrayal of Tate. All, oh, all oh, poor Tate, poor Andrew, pity him, folks. That's what Candace wants you to do. She didn't hide the fact that she and Andrew Tate are actually good friends. In fact, uh, her husband, I think his name's George Farmer, he's a, a wealthy man from the UK. Uh, he has said on uh, one or two videos that he and Andrew Tate have known each other for quite some time. So that could possibly explain why she gave such a softball interview to Andrew. Candace did challenge Tate on one minor thing regarding his porn business, uh, but he shrugged it off and she let it go. But to make matters worse, Candace later committed an entire episode on her channel to defaming one of the current victims of the Tate brothers, one of the women who are currently involved in the case against the Tates. So, in this episode, she discussed how this victim was sexually involved with five different adult men, close to their 30s, and one guy was even, I believe, in his 50s, when she was involved with this, this girl who was a teenager at the time, 16, 17 years old. So Candace does, commits this whole episode to shaming this girl through the whole, through the entire thing. And she makes it seem like this teenager is some sort of mastermind capable of conning five grown men uh, into thinking that she's in her mid-twenties. One of the men, named Keith Fox, uh, he was the one that was in his fifties at the time, he was charged for his involvement with this teenager after the mother of the girl hired a private investigator to catch him in the act. Um, he caught, he got the evidence and for some, but for some stupid reason, Candace decided on her episode to not name the name of the child predator, and his name's Keith Fox, by the way. You can look him up if you want. During her entire episode, she doesn't name that, that guy, but she repeatedly name drops the girl who was a teenager at the time of the case against Keith Fox. She name drops her over and over and over. And this lady, keep in mind, she's a she's an adult now, but she's she's involved in the case against Tate's right now. So, what reason would Candace have to name drop this woman? Here, you look. I think that the reason for this case boils down to one 21-year-old girl making an allegation that, of course, had to be taken very seriously. This is an easy thing for me to actually research, to really get behind whether or not this is all nonsense, whether or not the Tate brothers are calling this the Matrix, and when, in fact, they actually have a real victim here who suffered. A victim who I want to say, I welcome welcome. Do you hear this? And I know that you have a lawyer. If you would like to sit on this show and detail what happened to you, I will give you a platform. And I mean that, okay? So I looked in to me. I was wondering who she was. And here are some facts that you should know. Before she ever met a Tate brother, she was a sex worker. She had her own Pornhub account, and she could be contacted via a sex hotline. Again, that is before she ever met a Tate brother. She also had an OnlyFans account, and a TikTok account before she ever met a Tate brother. She also was active on the website seekingarrangements.com. These are just the facts that I'm giving you about her. It's not to paint her in a derogatory way. It is just pertinent to know that because there are many people that are walking around assuming that this was some innocent person that was trafficked over to Romania and then was forced to work against their will in the pornographic industry for which they had knew nothing about. That is not the circumstance. It is relevant to this case to discuss her history before she ever met a Tate brother. But I mean, you dig further, she's actually been involved in other cases as well. 
The first case involves a man who I am not going to name, and the only reason I'm not going to name him is because at the time of the allegations against him, was in fact a minor. And that, of course, is relevant. So we just want to be ethical here and not expose his name so that people can look up the case because, as I said, she was underage at the time. Uh, essentially, it was believed that she was having sexual relations with him, and the courts found that to be true. And he has now been sentenced to 24 years in prison. I am just very disappointed in the hypocrisy and the grift that Candace Owens has shown when it comes to the Tates. Especially when she also made this video discussing age gaps in dating. But on the topic of people dating with really big age gaps, I think there's probably a little more nuance. I find it problematic, and I do think that it probably does remark on confidence and a power structure. When you have a person like Scott Disick, you know, he's a part of the Kardashian clan, Courtney Kardashian's baby daddy, he makes me uncomfortable. He does. I find it very weird that he waits for young women to turn 18, and the moment that they turn 18, he dates them. He's 33, and the idea of me going on a date with an 18-year-old boy, and I say boy because that is how I would feel about an 18-year-old boy, it just, it just doesn't make sense. And the idea that she's 18, but she's so mature and has experience, I'm not really buying into that. I think it's problematic when you're dating people that are closer in age to your son, Ms. Mason Disick, who I think is maybe a... Uh, 12 or something like that than they are to you. So the, I do think that that is a power thing. It is a confidence thing. And there's something that just creeps me out about it. And I'm not trying to be judgmental. It's creepy. I thought very creepy when Celine Dion married that old man named Renee. I mean, she was 14 when he was sitting on her. I think that she's a victim. I, I know because I was 18 at one point, a girl's mind is just not fully developed when she's 18 years old. Uh, she's She is, for, for lack of a better word, a child. Okay. Now, another social media influencer, is Bryson Gray. Now, this guy bills himself as an unyielding and staunch Christian conservative with, the morals, with morals of the highest caliber. He's calling out leftist de de degeneracy all over the place. He has slammed folks for wanting to take our guns, for exposing kids to sexual content in schools or drag shows, or for being racist against white people. But let's see here. What does Bryson Gray think of a minor attracted predator, Nick Fuentes? Uh, like it or not, me and Nick Fuentes are friends. I know a lot about hating Nick Fuentes. Uh, me and Nick Fuentes are friends in real life. Um, if you go watch my last YouTube video I posted, Nick Fuentes was a part of helping me put together my album. Um, he has shown a lot of love to me. I showed love to him. It's just how it works, no matter how controversial he is, because we are grown adult men. And that's why I like, like, a, I don't know if you know who Nick Fuentes is. I mean, you should by now. Oh, my God, bro. I don't know I, him. I don't okay. know him. But you're about to tell me a little bit about him. So feel free. School me on Nick. Because I, I all I know is whenever Kanye is around saying something wild, <clears throat> Nick Fuentes is usually on the opposite side of the table, busting out laughing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't think he, listen. So Nick, my boy, I've been cool with Nick for a minute. Right. Right. Um and uh I like thought he was talk. racist though. How's he your boy? I thought he was right? racist. Isn't that interesting? Like before Ye, like me and Nick was like cool. Like he came to my came to my birthday cookout. We went to the Kanye show together. He came to my show in Chicago. We was hanging out. We was in Chicago, drop top, mega hat, riding through the hood. The reason I'm, I'm name dropping these conservative influencers and calling them out is because it points to their inconsistency with their principles. They are publicly fervently against leftists grooming kids sexually, yet when it's happening in their own camp, amongst their own friends and their buddies and their pals, they're willing to look the other way. That's a problem, and it needs to be called out. We need to expose these conservatives, these conservatives, and these grifters, who, though they might be conservative, or they may have been in the past, they are showing a willingness to bend on their principles. This is what politicians do. This is what people who are greedy of gain do. 
The love of money is the root of all evil. And grifters, all they want is money. It's unfortunate that this list of conservative influencers who promote the Tates and Fuentes and others like them, it seems to go on and on and on. We see people like Elijah Schaefer, MMA fighter Jake Shields, the Hodge twins, Morgan Ariel, Dr. Anastasia Lupus, even Laura Loomer. She's got lots of events and photos and videos and clips of her hanging out with Fuentes. Now, some of you might say, yeah, but uh, what about Trump? He, he dined with Nick Fuentes once. Yeah, well, after he dined with Fuentes, later on, people called him out for it. And Trump did admit, oh, I had no idea who this guy was prior. Trump didn't look into him, apparently, which uh, shame on you, Trump, for not doing that. But I could keep talking about so many more of these people uh, Gunther Eagleman, um, Myron Gaines. There's so many people that, that are promoting minor attracted predators. And it needs to stop. If it doesn't stop, we need to kick these people out of the conservative movement and consider them. We need to shame them. Put them to shame. Expose them for being hypocrites. How are you going to call out minor attraction on the left, but you're not going to call it out on the right? It's no wonder that some of the, the liberals, are they see this hypocrisy and they call it out themselves and they're like, what's the big, what's the big idea? What's the big deal? You do it. Why can't we do it? So, I wrap up with this. Don't be hypocrites, Christians. Don't be hypocrites, conservatives. If you legitimately want to fight against evil that's aimed at our children, that's aimed at teenagers, then you've got to be principled. You can't be bending on your principles. You can't be out there saying, claiming that you want to, to combat child grooming, but then when you see, when you read about a case of uh, a, an adult teacher who got sexually involved with one of her teenage students, you can't be saying stupid things like, oh, where was where was that teacher when I was in high school? That's, that's just like r ridiculous logic. That's stupid logic. That's stupidity. Pardon my language. You know, I don't cuss, but I call it oatmeal brain. When, you're oat when your brain turns to mush and you, you th you're principles are so flexible that you're not an actual principled person. I leave you with this. I recommend that if you follow people like Tucker, Candace, Hodge Twins, any of these other people I named, Elijah Schaefer, Bryson Gray, if you follow them, Help to call them out. Help to expose them for their grift, for their hypocrisy. Or just unfollow them. Don't give them your business by following them. Don't share their content anymore because you're, you're, you're promoting these grifters yourself by liking their stuff and sharing their stuff. And in doing so, you're helping them to stay relevant. Don't do it. In fact, what I want you to do is be bold as lions.